Joe Griffith. I'm Cara Kilduff. You are watching Talking About, and we are going to go over to our music set, and we have a very special guest for you who's going to take it away uh, right now. So enjoy. I hope. I hope. Found that you had a breakdown No, it's not that funny But I find it funny All the times you used to knock me down I've been waiting for the day That you got what was coming To you To Come on over, bring the handheld over. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So, again, I'm Joe Griffith. I'm Clara Kildo. Uh, Kristen Marilyn, welcome. Hi. I brought Hi. these for you guys. Ooh. That was amazing. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Does it feel oh, weird to have you. the handheld? Like, <laughs> no, I mean, this is what I deal with all the time, so it's okay. <laughs> it's actually weird when I don't have something in my hand and I'm like, what do I do with this? <laughs> That's why I hold an iPad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's been, what, a two, th two or three years since oh you've gosh. been here? I, yeah, I feel like it's been like almost three years probably since I was here last. Um, uh, and you've been up to so much. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, no, I've been, I, I've been performing a lot. Um, it, it's just, you know, the past, like, I was telling you before, the past, I guess, eight months or so have just felt like my life has kind of been at a standstill. I was signing a management agreement and then signing um, a label agreement to release my EP. And, and I'm, it's just, I've been, like, playing this waiting game, waiting for them to, like, be ready. <laughs> Are they ready? So they're ready. They're finally ready. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's been that, you know, this EP has been recorded for about a year now. Um, and, you know, it's just been this long road of trying to uh, find people to help me release it in the right way. I, you know, I don't personally have the funds to release it in the way that I think it deserves. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to find people uh, to work with to get it out, you know, with with PR and marketing and mm -hmm. all that um, that I just can't afford on my own. So not yet, not, not yet. yet, exactly. One day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things I, st I say constantly about the show, and I, I, I overstate it, but we we get to have some of the best people that nobody's ever heard of before. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> and uh, not that nobody's heard of you, you ha you have a solid following. Yeah. Yeah. And and <laughs> that that with this hopefully that is only going to grow and you've I got you've so. got the team yeah. in place. Now. I think that's kind of been the f the as much as it was my own decision to try to find someone and not release it on my own. It has been a little frustrating just because you know I feel like these songs are really good mm -hmm. and if they were out there already, the momentum would be already right. like going. I can't so. wait to listen to this when I get home tonight. Yeah. So well. That was fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Thank I mean, you. That's how I'm I like, can we curse on Pop the Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the only way they handle my Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that's well, I was looking, I was on your website. I was doing research, cyber stalking. <laughs> uh -uh. No, no, but I was really excited because you have a bunch of dates coming up in the city. So, yeah. you guys, if you like what you see, you can check her out like very soon. She'll be performing. Yeah. Yeah, I perform. I'm actually. I just got asked to do a CMJ showcase like yesterday. Um, a friend of mine texted me, and he was like, "I just got asked to do this. Do you want to <laughs> jump on this showcase?" And I was like, "I don't have anything going on for CMJ right now, so sure, why not?" Yeah, um, you never know who's gonna be there. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, Bowery Electric. It's the first day of CMJ. I think it's Tuesday, October thirteenth. So I just did a show in a small gay bar, and I thought, you never know who's gonna be there. You never know. Yeah. There wasn't anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Well, there was a drag queen in the corner, drunk, falling down. No, it was a stand-up <laughs> show. It was a lot of fun. I know. Fun. I'm teasing. You know. But like, wait, has this ever happened to you? So I'm going to this show, and it's like somewhere in Queens, and I get out, and it's like. There's no one around. It's a little rapey. And I'm like walking with my backpack. I'm like, oh, this sucks. Er, er, er. And then I thought, do I love comedy this much? Yes. And then <laughs> I kept walking. Does that ever happen to you when you're on your way somewhere? All the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. Because the getting there is the worst part. It's like and I have equipment that I, mm -hmm. that I drag with me. And it's not a lot. I'm a vocalist. So like, granted, I'm not a drummer. I don't have to deal with that. Although I've been in bands and I've had to deal with boys' equipment. <laughs> and having, you know, boys standing there like, why aren't you carrying my things? And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, what? I've, I've been Whoa. in some <laughs> I've been with some diva boys. Why before. are you carrying my things? Because <laughs> you could be like, I'm the vocalist. <laughs> I know, right? Because I have to preserve this. My instrument, <laughs> if you will. Right? But, um, but yeah, no, it's the, it's the getting to the shows that I'm like, oh, God, I don't want to do this today. I just want to stay at home and veg out and watch television and, and, and screw this show. Who cares? And then I get there. And you have the best time. And it's great. It's great. And I'm so glad. And like after the show, I'm so glad that I did it. I'm like, this was fantastic. I'm such a jerk. Why would I ever think that? And then the next show, it's the same thing. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> I have to get there. And I have to get on the subway. And I have to, ugh. And I play a lot of shows in Jersey. So not only do I have to take the subway, but I have to take New Jersey Transit. Oof. Yeah. The worst. Girl. It's, yeah, it's the worst. And then I, I get to my, my mom picks me up, 
She takes me to her house. I get ready there, and then I get in her car, and I go to wherever the <laughs> Wait, show does she is. drive you to the show? No, she doesn't drive you to the show. <laughs> she no. lets you drive. She lets me drive. That's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> does she, like, feed you or try and give you shit from oh, Costco yeah. oh, my before mom you leave? Feeds, yeah, my mom's like, what do you need to eat? You know, are you hungry? I'm like, yes, I'm starving. I have a show. <laughs> do you want a case of... Vitamin waters? <laughs> <laughs> this just reminds me, my sister came over yesterday and it's like, take some tomatoes. Take some tomatoes from the garden, you know, the end of the garden season. Yeah. Here, take some tomatoes. <laughs> you, you want some sauce? Here, take some sauce. I would love that. I would love that. You should have yeah. brought some shit tonight. Yeah, you should have right? brought some Next sauce. Next time? Where's my sauce? <laughs> In the freezer. Next time. In the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'll, 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 part of the joy of performing is the audience feedback. And do, do you find that you're really in sync with with the crowd most of the time absolutely i mean i i've i noticed this um back when i used to do theater uh that like the energy of a crowd can completely change mm -hmm. how you perform on stage and and i completely feed off the energy and if the energy in the crowd is dead it makes it so Hard. much mm -hmm. more difficult um and people don't you know if you don't if you're not a performer you don't understand that like you know you don't get why like it's hard for me to perform for you when you're just like yeah because you yeah. don't want to keep working yeah, i'm like yeah. what are you staring at me like that for and then i get off stage and they're like that was great and i'm like where was that while i was up there <laughs> like you were making me work 10 times as hard give me something i feel your pain yeah well i mean <laughs> totally. one yeah. of the joys of, of listening to an artist such as yourself and i've found this while listening to your music as well as some of the other folks that we've had on the show is that when i am mentally in sync with with the the layers of of depth within within your work within the, within the music and it just i get where you're going with it and i get what you're saying you know yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's just to have fun. Sometimes it's you know a, a lot deeper than that. And sometimes it's something that presents itself as just wanting to be fun. But if you listen closely, it's really a lot deeper than right. that. And yeah. and that's 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 the beauty of, of uh, a talented artist. And and I really appreciate what you do. Thank well, you. I was watching uh, some of your videos, and there was one that was from a, a live venue, and I was like, oh my God, Homegirl is working. She is <laughs> selling this. <laughs> and it was great because usually in videos, it's just like, oh yeah, mm hmm. But this one I was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to watch the next one too. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> I mean, those, those live, keep putting the live shit up on your website because that was like, that's what drew me in, Thank like you. snagged me. Mm -hmm. I was yeah, just like, I'm, damn. It's the, you know, the, Live is really where I'm in my element. I'm. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm still learning the recording thing, even though I've been doing it for forever. But like performance, I've been doing since I was two years old. So you know that you know being on stage is where I absolutely feel at home. And and I've been in bands, so like I'm I'm you know used to this type of performance as well. Um, but getting in like a vocal booth is still like nerve wracking to me. Um, and and having to like figure out how to perform the song the way that you would mm -hmm. essentially mm -hmm. live without anybody in front of you you know and then also and then you don't want to peek the microphone and you're worrying about your plosives and like all this other shit that you have to think <laughs> about while you're like trying to get the <laughs> best recording ever because it's gonna be you know that's it like whereas live like you could do whatever I mean yeah we have iPhones and all that stuff but you know, you do it once and someone's captured it on their iPhone, but they kind of love when you screw up too. Yeah. Because they know what the perfect sound sounds like. Mm -hmm. So they want, you know, they want the imperfections live. I always preferred like with, with musicians that I really liked, like I would buy the studio album, but then to hear them live and, and you know, to be able to watch them improv something mm -hmm. was so yeah. much more thrilling to watch. When mm -hmm. it's not a perfect clone of the yeah. recording. Right, yeah. Uh, just. Oh, not at all. Did you see Straight Outta Compton? No. Girl. I know. <laughs> It'll inspire you. I Listen, swear to you. I don't want to place blame, but... <laughs> but does, <laughs> does somebody have to be blamed in the plan? I'm kidding. We, well, I wanted to go see it, and then we were like looking up show times, and then somehow we wound up going to Mr. Holmes. Or, I was like, we're so white. What? <laughs> I don't even know. It's What's a, Mr. Holmes? Like Ian McKellen? Yes, yeah, yeah, Ian McKellen. Oh, Cullen, God, yeah. you but, guys. <laughs> but, hey. That's like <laughs> Wonder Bread with the crust cut off. <laughs>
No, go see it. Honestly, yeah, like I've, as a performer, I've heard, I've heard. I walked out of there so pumped. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and then there's a scene where Easy E is like they're making fun of him and he's in the recording booth and you'll you'll get that. Okay. It's good. It's so right. good. No, I've heard such good things and I heard good things before, but then Mr. Holmes was playing at the theater like right around the corner from <laughs> us and I was like, I was like, oh, it, it is right there. We wouldn't have to go anywhere. <laughs> Wait, do you guys live in the suburbs? <laughs> no, we live on 54th Street. No. <laughs> no. Oh my God. I live in the spare in the suburbs. No, I don't live in the suburbs. Oh my God. No, I grew up in the suburbs. I never want to go back to the suburbs ever. <laughs> ever, ever. Oh, just the fact that you keep saying Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Wait, was it good? It's very good. Yeah. It's right. not straight out of Compton. It's Syrian. It's actually. You can't really mess with Syrian. Yeah, and I mean, Ian McKellen is... He's pretty fun. I got to hang out with him one time. Oh, that's... Yeah, all I've done is shake, I've shaken his hand. And he was really cool and funny. Yeah. All right, so I'll go see it. <laughs> you go see Straight Outta Compton. I'll go see Mr. Holmes, and okay. then we can we can meet back here <laughs> and have our peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with the crust cut off <laughs> and trade notes. You could probably wait for Mr. Holmes to like come out on Netflix or something. Mm. Shit. <laughs> it's good. It is really good, and it's worth your time. I just don't know that it's worth uh, seventeen dollars. Is probably what we spent on it because yeah. we got those recliner chairs. Uh, hopefully, a few years from now, people won't be saying that about your biopic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but listen, straight out of Compton, you gotta see that on a big screen. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Done. Done. It's so good. Done. So it's been it's been about uh, two or three years since you've been here. Yeah. Next time you come here, what do you want to be able to tell us? Oh, wow. I want to be able to tell you that uh, I went on a crazy tour with, um, I was opening for Sia, and it was the most amazing experience of my entire life. Um, yeah. I think that could happen. I, you know, you, you put it out there, and... It could happen. It might not be Sia, but, like... <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. You know, I'll take Lana Del Rey, whatever. <laughs> You're going to get there. Whoever, whoever. <laughs> Wait, will you have like an entourage the next time you come? Uh, but I do, I do hope that you will come back. And where can people yeah. find out more about you? Uh, you can go to my website, KirstenMarilyn.com. And you um, spell it in a unique way? Yes. K-I-I-R-S-T-I-N-M-A-R-I-L-Y-N. Marilyn Lake, Marilyn Manson, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> um, but yeah, Kirsten is spelled very differently. And, uh, or, you know, I'm on Instagram, I'm constantly on Instagram. That's kind of my, like, place to be. I'm always posting. Um, so it's just at Kirsten Marilyn. And uh, Twitter, eh, not so much. I don't, why do people use Twitter? It makes no sense to me. To promote I shows. I mean. <sighs> I barely use that. Um, and then Facebook, you know, you can mm -hmm. go to my fan page, um, facebook.com slash Kirsten Marilyn. Why do people even use Twitter? I don't know. <laughs> I don't get it. No, I, I yeah, feel we like who it's have pages. We who have we who have our feeds. Yes. I mean, I I have Twitter, and, but I feel like it's just for like celebrities to kind of word vomit and then people to freak out about it. I usually go to Twitter when I think an evil thought and I giggle and then I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> right, no one will see this. <laughs> or like, so like I do on Twitter. Think of something horrible and be like, who's gonna respond? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. It's always like-minded folks. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you have a couple more songs for us, yes, right? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? I do. Oh, damn. Like, so. What time is it? What time uh, it is? We have just enough time for them. Yeah? yeah? All right. Okay. I'll go do so. this. I'll go thank do you this. so much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, Kirsten's going to sing us out. And, uh, Fabulous. It's wonderful. And, then and so that was something you completely different. Well, okay. That was supposed to happen. That was supposed to happen, okay. so <laughs> take it away. <laughs> and that was something completely different. I rely on the struggle Heart pumping up with trouble I feel alive when I'm climbing up Oh, no I don't want to give it up The fear and the doubt. I walk the streets of the city. Ain't got no money, but yeah. don't need no pity. I'm everything that I need to be. Oh, yeah. You better watch the tone in your mind. Yeah.
get you anything and all i asked for was loyalty oh no you better watch that tone in your mouth because i will knock you straight to the ground and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. That bomb has more power than 20,000 tons of TNT. It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. With this bomb, we have now added a new and revolutionary increase in destruction, in destruction, in destruction, in destruction, in destruction. Talk about killing my vibe, killing my vibe. Let's talk about how we survive, how on earth we survive. Just when I think I'm giving a lot, seems I'm taking more than I ought. And I'm out of control, I'm out of control. Out of control, out of control. I'm out of control, out of control, out of control. I'm out of control. Oh, I'm out of control. Talk about killing my vibe, killing my vibe. Let's talk about how we survive, how on earth we survive. Oh my God, can't we stop this fire with some simple conversation? No, no Bibles and bones, and we're out of control. Out of control, out of control. We're out of control, out of control, out of control. Second. 
Second Amendment rights, tote our guns, live our lives, be prepared to uprise. But really, we're kidding ourselves, because we're out here just killing ourselves. It's Armageddon. It's like nobody's getting it. She's in money and power through greed and corruption. It's nothing against total global destruction. And we're out of control. I'm Dr. Ralph Mayer. I have teamed up with The Fight in the fight against HIV. We believe that pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PrEP, is a huge step towards complete elimination of the HIV epidemic. Both the CDC and the British National Health Service support the use of daily medication in HIV seronegative people who are at substantial risk for contracting HIV. By simply taking one pill once a day, the risk of contracting HIV is reduced by over 90%. Now is the time to do your part. Talk to your doctor about how you can protect yourself. We believe that PrEP sex is safe sex in the fight against HIV. Let's eliminate the stigma and the disease. <laughs>